It's now time for Comic News with Amy Morgan. Hello, this is Amy, a.k.a. Lady Wreck, back again with my Transformers Comics News and Reviews in a little more than five minutes. Because, uh, yeah, I've been running over lately. Uh, news, news, news. New York Comic Con happened this last weekend, and I went on vacation, so I didn't really watch as closely as I would have liked. Uh, but the only bit that came out of the convention that I've been able to glean from the internet is in January, we'll be getting the next IDW crossover infestation series called Transformers vs. Mars Attacks. Uh, the creative team will be uh, Shane McCarthy and Matt Frank. And that's all I've been able to find out about the convention, which is really sad to say. Yeah. Um, for our UK watching audience, there will be a mini con in Dublin City. You can check out Simon Furman's blog for more information on this if you are close enough to attend. Also available from Amazon is the next Transformers Classified Battle Mountain for younger readers. I'll let you know uh, what I thought of it once I finish reading it to my son. Uh, lots of birthdays in the Transformers creative circle have happened recently. We've had Priscilla, Tremontano, uh, Alex Milne, upcoming Guido Guidi, Josh Burcham, and Chris Carter. So give everybody a quick happy birthday shout out. Woohoo! And Marcelo Matier is officially a daddy again. So don't forget to go and wish him a congratulations. Uh, lastly, Casey Collar is attending Rhode Island Comic Con. If you want to get anything signed November 3rd or 4th or buy a print, you can find him at the Rhode Island Comic Con. And that's the news, so on to the reviews! Up for review are two comics this go-round, Regeneration 1, issue 84, and Robots in Disguise, issue number 10. Uh, Regeneration 1, issue 84 is written by Simon Furman and drawn by Andrew Wildman. Uh, the Wreckers and Circuit Smasher, who is actually really Spike, uh, and Company, Circuit Smasher and Company, split into two groups, uh, one to go after the Ark and Ante, and the other to distract and possibly save Cup from the insane Megatron. Uh, meanwhile, back on Cybertron, Rodimus finds out that the Decepticons are trying to steal something important in between his visions that something isn't quite right. In the end, with the mounting odds against them, the Ark isn't so easy to break into, and Megatron is truly a force to reckon with. And he also gets what he truly wanted. But could it end with someone taking revenge on Megatron? We'll see. Uh, this issue moves very quickly. Um, it's action, action, action. But it also builds Spike's character and Rodimus's. Um, but the end of this issue only made me worried for the survival of several characters, both on the bot side and on the con side. Things are just an issue away from, being, from going completely deadly, uh, which several of the creators have teased that things happen in issue 85 that um, just cannot be undone. They're, they're, it's going to be big. It's going to be huge. Uh, there will be tears, possibly. <laughs> and after this issue, uh, I'd say they sure do. It's set that it's it's setting up eighty five just perfectly. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with it. The coloring is still keeping this comic together for me. Um, I love the organic feel of what Wildman is doing here as well. Um, it's still a great marriage of both old and the new comic. Um, creating. Uh, we have the older Marvel feel with the newer coloring process. At least for me, being a newer fan um, who has only read about 20% of the previous Marvel run, um, I'm happy with this. I'm really, really happy with it. Uh, I'm giving it a four out of five stars. My next review um, is Robots in Disguise issue number 10, written by John Barber and drawn by Livio Ramadelli. This is the continuation of to Robots in Disguise issue 5, where we followed Orion Pax into space and his quest to see what Jahaxis is up to. Uh, they are going back to that planet that Wheelie was on way back in his spotlight. Uh, they call it LV-117. 
Uh, but there is something very wrong with this planet. Uh, as Orion, Pax, and company have spent several months tracking Jihaxis, uh, they approach a strange Decepticon ship, and then LV-117 just appears out of nowhere. Um, they follow the ship to the surface when it disappears on approach. Um, all the while, they're getting the these flash forwards and backwards to their time there and what happened there in the past. Uh, things that they haven't done yet and things that they haven't even said. It, But they are eventually do say them. It, it does come across as a little confusing until everything pulls together um, in on the last page. Basically, the Decepticon ship that they followed in was the one that was also carrying the time machine that was stolen that's been in previous issues of Robots in Disguise. Um, Orion Pax finds it, and when he touches the the time machine, like the, the sphere that was in the middle of the ship, um, it ends up it ends up pulling him um, into the time jumping back and forth. So he's having just conversations with some of the Decepticons that are there, but only long enough to make him more confused as he tries to piece together what's happening to himself and to this world that he's on. In the end, he figures it all out, uh, but is powerless to stop what has been put in motion because it kind of already happened. <laughs> Uh, once he's reunited with his friends, the, the guys he went with, I think Hardhead and one of the other, uh, Wheelie and um, Garnack, um, he's only been in the planet, it seems to him, for a few hours, but to them, it was several weeks. And they leave the planet, and that takes them even another two weeks to get off. So it's just time travel, time travel. This is the reason why it's so hard to write, time travel, right? Uh, this was a confusing issue, but it was supposed to be with the flipping between the past and the present and the future. It made it hard to follow. And it wasn't until I got to the final page that things kind of made sense for me. And it was probably the second reading which pulled more of the information that I got in there together. What's good about it is that it is setting up an important conflict that will continue to keep Orion Pax engaged in this story but it hints that this may even be connected to the chaos event that happened last year um barber the king of continuity uh he's working his magic on this so who knows maybe he'll make you know chaos be more than it really was so i'm like oh, oh that'd be kind of cool um it kind of has this feel of one of those star trek episodes where the time travel is involved where they start bouncing around and you don't get it until like the very very end so well at least it came that way to me i i thought oh it kind of feels like a star trek episode where time was involved i i know that i've seen an episode that had something similar to this where you're like they approach a, a, a they approach a planet and they go down to the planet and they find when they get there that they're in the past or and then they have to come forward it just seemed very much like I think I've seen this episode before. Not in Transformers, but in Star Trek. Um, either way, we get the t time traveling ship back, which I was kind of worried that once we saw it disappear in Robots in Disguise that we weren't gonna see it again. Well, yeah, now it has a purpose. <laughs> um, it was kind of stolen. <laughs> so now they gotta find a way to get it back. Um, I mean, stolen a second time. Like, at, that was kind of the point of the last page, the last two pages, is that he, Orion Pax, figures out that this has been stolen again. Um, so it was good that it's not just a one-shot device. It, we are seeing it again. Um, and this makes it an important part because, yeah, yeah, it falls into the wrong hands and now they need to go find it because this is not going to fare well if these people continue to have it. That and they've put something in motion so I don't think that this is the end of, of, of this, you know, I thought it was just going to be two, two, you know, two issues and then this was going to wrap it up. Well, this doesn't feel wrapped up. This feels like uh, in a couple issues we're going to get the, uh, back to this story again. So, which I'm all right with because, yeah, I want to know where they're going with it. So I give this issue a four out of five stars and yeah, it's, it's a good issue. It's coming out this week. So. 
Thanks for tuning in to my review, and we'll catch you later. Bye!